Good day, everyone. I pray that you are well and are very blessed. We have a good, good father. I wanted to have just a few moments with a short conversation and reflection in the book of Genesis chapter 2. But before we dive in there, I want to ask, have you ever been told that you can't do this or you can't do that or you can't get in there? The whole point is that you can't. Let me share with you a memory I have from when I was just a kid. I remember like it was yesterday, but I was either four or five years old and I can't remember, but it's it's amazing that we can have those memories from way back then. Anyway, it was a memory from when it was Christmas time. I remember my mother was getting ready for something in her bathroom and I kept going towards the linen closet that was on the far end of the bathroom. My mother told me that I was not allowed in there. And if I were to go in there, I would not get the Christmas gifts that her and my father had bought me that year. I do not remember what I was thinking, but I remember that at some point I went in there and to my astonishment, there were presents there that were not wrapped and there were the toys that I wanted. How blessed is that? Funny thing is, a mother knows when we have been disobedient. I have no idea how she knew, but she knew I went in the closet. That Christmas, the toys I had seen she bought for me were not the presents I'd received. I was a blessed child. And even in my disobedience, I was still given a gift out of love. What would you have done? Granted, I was four years old. But even today, we're, we're told it all the time that you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't go in there. You're not allowed to do that. You see, when we're told that we cannot do something or something is off limits, we become more motivated than ever to not listen. There's something that tugs in a direction that's off limits. We have this free will. And over the years, without discipline, our self-entitlement has become more increasing. We feel that we deserve to know what the answer is or why we are not allowed to do something. When we are told something as the forbidden fruit and cannot have it, we ultimately want it even more, especially if it's off limits. In many cases, we use our phones every day for everything we do. In every social media website and app, we find headlines that reads, you won't believe this, or check this out, or check out what Trump just did. We are drawn in to check them out. The repercussions for clicking on the ads or headlines can be very damaging to you or your phones. The choices you make to obey can be rewarding or when we are motivated to do the one thing we are told is off limits, it can be very damaging to ourselves and even those around you. Now, let me take you to the time after God had rested from creation. Genesis 2, verses 7 through 17. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living person. Verse 8. The Lord God planted a garden toward the east in Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. Verse 9. Out of the ground the Lord God caused every tree to grow that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Verse 10. Now a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divided and became four rivers. We jump to verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to cultivate it and tend it. 16. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden ye may freely eat. Verse 17, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For on the day that you eat from it, you will certainly die. We can definitely go on and, and learn so much more, but we'll stop here. The takeaway from this passage and reflection is a matter of thanking God for placing you where you are and the people who are around you and in your life. 
You see, God had created a place just for you to work, to be able to provide for your family and to be happy. It is supposed to be your paradise here on earth to do everything for the glory of God. Work is not made for us to be angry or feel depressed. Work is for us to be happy and to enjoy what God has blessed us with. Here, God had placed Adam in the garden to work the ground, a place that was protected. It had a shelter, it had food. It was simple and full of love, not luxurious, but a place that is a paradise, a place that had only one rule. Do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Here, where we're at, we are, where we're at right now, God wants us to love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. And we shall love our neighbor as we love ourselves. These are the two greatest commandments that hang in the whole law. You get that from Matthew 22, verse 37 through 40. You see, we must obey God. We love him with our hearts and with all of our soul and with all of our mind. In everything that we do, give honor to God. Give God the glory. When we have food in the table, give God the glory. When we have work, let's be happy and joyful and give God the glory. In everything we do, give God the glory. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you are not to do something, then please don't do it. If the headline reads, you won't believe this. This just happened. Build up your self-control and stay away from those and do everything for the glory of God. It starts with the little steps. A first act of obedience, then another, and then another. You know, we could go on to, to know what happened next, but the whole point up to this is the fact that when we're told that we're not supposed to do something, we have this, this tug on us that pulls us to do that very thing. And out of our obedience to God, let's obey Him and not do those things. Let's trust that He knows what's best for us. Let's be that living example for those that are around us and those that look upon us. Let's give God the glory in his name. Amen. Thank you for today. Thank you for, for checking on our link here. And I just pray that you have a blessed day wherever you're at. You know, and just take this reflection with you. God bless you. Amen.